Baz Luhrmann is back behind the camera in his feature biopic about none other than the king of rock and roll, Elvis. So are you going to put on your blue suede shoes and rush out to see this? Or is it a pile of hunk of hunk of burning trash? From his childhood to his rise to stardom and his conquering of Las Vegas, Elvis Presley becomes the first rock and roll star and changes the world with his music. Now we see his story through the eyes of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. So director Baz Luhrmann has a distinct style for his films. And even though it's been a while since he's been behind the camera for a feature length movie, Elvis is very much a Baz Luhrmann presentation. The first handful of minutes had me questioning whether or not I was actually gonna enjoy the film because there is this barrage of imagery that comes at us with varying angles, shots just spinning as they zoom in. Plus there's images overlaid on top of other images. I mean, it's hectic, frenetic, strange even. And if you're not prepared for it, it's gonna take a moment to gain some equilibrium. I think Lerman is one of those directors kind of like Wes Anderson. I mean, there's not much middle ground on whether you like or don't like his style. There's nothing wrong with that, but because of this specific type of visual storytelling, I do know that many aren't going to like this film just simply because of how it's presented. After the initial frantic unveiling of the imagery, the film does calm down just a bit, and we're introduced to the narrator of the story, Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks. Now, we saw all this in the trailer as well, and we can tell the bent this tale is going to have because, again, as we saw in the trailer, Parker says that some will make him out to be the villain of this story. And Hanks does a wonderful job of becoming a subtle villain. I mean, he's quietly manipulative, one who just always demurs to make people think that he's way more innocent and naive than he actually is. And I loved watching Hanks in this role because we don't often see him as anything nefarious. He's also got this weird and nondescript accent that works totally well for the story and then for reveals that come much later on in the story. Now, his speaking cadence is measured, it's planned, and very deliberate, and he chooses every word so carefully that they drip with emotion. But that emotion is also shrouding his selfishness. Now, Austin Butler plays the king and the title role, and he is phenomenal as Elvis. I mean, there have been performances from Daniel Day-Lewis where I never saw the actor, only just the character that he was portraying. And in this, I mean, the same goes for Butler. And this was awesome to watch because everything he did was so spot on from his husky voice to the way he even held his fingers. At no point did I see an actor standing in front of me, but I was actually watching Elvis Presley move about. The film showcases the explosive energy of his performances, and that's where a lot of Lerman's signature style flourishes. I mean, Elvis was demonstrative and he's full of motion. So to effectively translate that through the screen so that we actually experience it instead of just watch it, I mean, we need a storyteller who can capture that and then put us right in the middle. The editing is quick, it's sometimes jarring and even abrupt at times, and chaotic too, but it captured the sentiment of a lot of the crowd reactions to Elvis's performances. I mean, the first time we see Elvis perform bordered on the absurd, just because of how electrified everything was. Moments and emotions are just exaggerated within the crowd, but this made that scene even more impactful, causing static in the air of the theater to just come alive as it was on screen. And the camera zooms in quickly and it cuts to various parts of the scene to capture extreme reactions, all while having the music build in intensity. Now, the film maintains a lot of the energy throughout the story, but it definitely mellows out in how it's presented. Now, there is an urgency to a lot of the sequences, but we're not going at breakneck speed where we feel exhausted when everything's over. Now, as someone who is not a monster Elvis fan, nor am I someone who has just a great deal of knowledge on the man or his story, I found this to be very engaging and intriguing. I mean, I was sucked in by his progression, watching how he grew in popularity, but also just seeing how his childhood and upbringing played a massive influence on his storytelling within song. He got to share friendships and experiences with black people, despite it being a very segregated time. And the music he grew up with, whether it be gospel, rhythm and blues, and even rock and roll that was very progressive for the time, I mean, it all had an influence in his own music. I loved how the film showcased his friendship with B.B. King and some of the conversations that he had with him. Now, I'm not sure if they're totally historically accurate, but within the context of the movie, they were powerful. And even though this is a film about a musical artist, it still retains a lot of social commentary, showing how as an entertainer, he could choose to bow to the arbitrary rules of conformity that just a bunch of old white guys got to dictate, or he could be who he was and sing to his fans. And the line that really stuck with me through this was when he says how a reverend had once told him, when things are too dangerous to say, sing. There are some wonderful scenes in this movie that employ some great editing and storytelling that showcase just that very thing. Now, this is a fairly long film at about two hours and 40 minutes, but I never felt the time. I mean, I was along for the ride the entire thing through. Well, I mean, at least after I got reacquainted with Lorman's style after that beginning. 
I found the pace to be steady and flowing. Now, I said before that it had an urgency to it, but it also didn't rush through portions that needed to have time devoted to them. And because this is telling his story that just encompasses a bunch of years, there are elements that are barely covered and probably even completely ignored at times. But remember, I mean, this isn't a documentary, so you kind of have to expect that just a bit. The supporting cast is great in what they bring to the story, but really the entirety of the presentation rests on Butler's performance. I mean, if he can't pull off Elvis and then make you believe that he is the king of rock and roll, it's really hard to get behind anything in this. Now, thankfully, Butler nails it. He dances, sings, gyrates, and broods like Elvis. And at the end of the film, there's real footage of Elvis showing some of the scenes that were recreated for the movie. And it's awesome to see how well this captured reality. I think probably one of the coolest things about this film is that Lisa Marie Presley gave her blessing for the production. And I'm not talking about the go-ahead to make the film, but the actual final product. In an Instagram post, she wrote, quote, Let me tell you that this is nothing short of spectacular. Absolutely exquisite. Austin Butler channeled and embodied my father's heart and soul beautifully. In my humble opinion, his performance is unprecedented and finally done accurately and respectfully, unquote. She also tweeted this about the movie. You can feel and witness Baz's pure love, care, and respect for my father throughout this beautiful film. And it is finally something that myself and my children and their children can be proud of forever. I completely agree. So overall, Elvis is a moving biopic that captures the energy, passion, and entertainment of the king of rock and roll. Austin Butler in the title role is insanely good. And I love the fact that he sung the songs we hear throughout the film. Butler disappeared into the role, giving us a haunting performance to cheer over. Tom Hanks is diabolical and wicked as Colonel Tom Parker, and he too did a fantastic job of presenting a character that is weaselly and cunning, but comes across as caring and concerned. While the editing and presentation style of Baz Luhrmann may not resonate, the tragic story of a man's meteoric rise to fame is captivating. The music is wonderful, and while we could have had even more songs interspersed, the performances we get are effectively moving. I had a blast with this, and I really hope you do as well. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and some violence. I give Elvis four and a half out of five couches. So do you have a favorite Elvis song? I mean, there are so many to choose from. I would understand if it's hard to narrow it down to just one. But maybe what are some, some of your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.